Hello my lovelies, today's video is all about if somebody was so terrible and stole all my perfume collection, which ones would I go straight back into the world and buy again? Which ones I just can't live without? I must admit it was an extremely hard task to put together this list, but for sure this shows me how much I love and adore these perfumes out of my huge collection. By the way, if you're new to this channel, my name is Monica and here on this channel I do vlogs, luxury content and perfumes of course. So if you're interested, I'd love to have you subscribe and press that notification bell to get notified whenever I post next, because otherwise YouTube doesn't always show you my new videos when they when I post them. Okay, the first perfume that I really would have to get is this one from MFK because it kind of is my signature scent as much as I have a signature scent with my huge collection. This one I do wear quite a lot and it's the Oud Satin Mood Extrait from MFK. I love it because it's super strong, super long lasting, and I'm one of those people who hates reapplying perfume. I will if I have to, especially for lighter fragrances, for summer perfumes, I just have to do it, so I do it, but I would rather not. I don't know if you're the same, let me know in the comments. But this one, I just apply it in the morning and I'm good to go. I don't need to carry anything with me, but I do have a travel of this as well. I've got literally like four travel uh, little sprays of this one. So that just shows you how much I adore it. And so I would definitely need to uh, get this back in my collection. This is a velvety oody rose, but done in a very French classical way. So it's not your like Middle Eastern typical oud fragrance. It's more of a French French style oud. Uh, I really love it. It's much more wearable for me personally and this just feels like just silk. It, it like it, you can really just feel the texture of this perfume when you wear it. So even if you hate oud you have to check out this one because it's one of the first ouds I started loving when I disliked oud which was Back a few years ago. Next up, you might be a bit surprised by this, but ever since I got this perfume about, I think it was last summer, I wore it quite a lot last summer and also I've been craving it throughout this now springish time and a bit is, I think this is the most from all of, all of my YSL leaps that has gone because I really love this other toilet. I don't think it gets talked about a lot uh, enough because this is such a great scent. By the way, my dog is snoring. He's snoring. I don't want to wake him up. So that is the sound. But this perfume is so light. It's so refreshing. It just it has got this like just something in here that is a bit herbal and makes me just really want to wear this. It's refreshing and clings onto your skin so it really lasts and yeah I just love this version. I think it's an excellent version for if you live in a hotter climate and maybe you can't go for the intense because that one is excellent as well but this one is super refreshing and I grab it the most out of my YSL Libre. Just yeah so I would go and get this one as well. Merci. Don't snore. Next is one of my um, favorite, just really creamy, a uh, yellow flower scent. Yellow flower? White flower. <laughs> That's what I meant. And this one, the quality is really amazing. It's long lasting. I have so mem uh, many memories attached to it and I just love it as a scent. So it's a Rouge Malachite from Armani Privé. This scent is a bit dusty. I haven't used it in a while actually, but I need to put it on my little uh, marble top uh, where I use fragrances every single week from that selection. This scent is spicy, it's creamy, it smells a bit like Santan lotion. I love the bottle. It's so beautiful. If you love like jasmine, if you love just really creamy, beautiful white flower scents, this is so, it makes me feel like a queen, to be honest. It's just so delicious, so sexy. And um, yeah, I just love it so much. So definitely have to 
go and grab and repurchase it. And I still don't know why they have two different labels for the Armani Privé Rouge Malachite. Let me know if you guys know. Here in the UK, the or the parfum or the parfum was meant to come out, and then they discontinued the whole, whole line, and now they brought it back in, and they've got two labels for it. And it just I don't know what they've done with it. I think it might be the reformulation that they've done for the scent. But let me know if you know why it's got two different. Labels labels the scent. Next I would go and grab Tender Light. I recently saw it on sale and I think it's just such a such a sad thing because if I see these at outlets then I'm thinking oh the line is not doing well but the line is really amazing. I've got two favorites one of them is Tender Light and I just don't know what it is. This scent is the one that if I can't, I don't have the mood to wear anything, I'll always still be able to wear this. If I'm sick, if I'm feeling ill, nauseous, if I'm feeling depressed, like sometimes I can't wear a fragrance. Most of the time when I feel like this, I just don't want the association. And sometimes fragrances literally make me sick if I'm in that sort of a headspace or I'm feeling unwell. But this has been the only perfume that I could wear after the fragrance show when my nose was totally like blocked up and I couldn't stand any perfumes because I had smelled so many and like for a week straight I was like oh I, I don't want to smell anything so this is the scent that I would go and grab because it's super fresh unique enough likable enough to wear and there is this like lightness of this little like petally flowers and a bit of sweetness in here such a great everyday scent love this one next keeping to my theme of a bit of a fresher a perfume i would go for delina la rose and it surprises me nearly half of the bottle is gone uh, and i've got a backup bottle as well this scent I thought that I didn't like this as much as Delina. And in my head, I still think, oh, I don't like this much as Delina, the original, but I wear it more. So this must mean that I do love it more. I just seem to gravitate towards this very often spring summer winter even like i've worn it to do a workout i've worn it during like really hot weather i've worn it during really cold weather i just love love the scent it's so it's roses but it's like watery roses but it's still got this bit of like spikiness in here that it's got this greenness that makes it stand out it's not like a super boring rose it's an interesting nice rose that lasts and yeah i just find that this is because it's lighter it doesn't make me nauseous whereas the original delina sometimes does make me a bit nauseous because it's so intense and strong so i have to be careful with this one so easy going and the bottle is just stunning next up a perfume that i absolutely adore is from l'artisan parfumeur and it's a couleur vanille this scent is divine reminds me of like pre-pandemic times because that's when I got it and it just is so nostalgic beautiful I love vanilla so this is one of the scents that I would have to get because I have to have one vanilla straight back into my collection if somebody stole all my collection I would be like I I crave that vanilla and this vanilla is nice and it's a semi gourmand it's salty and it does remind me a lot of when you smell Kinderek chocolate and this is like the most divine smell. I love Kinderek chocolate and I'm not usually a person that loves chocolate that much but Kinderek chocolate is amazing and this has that bit of saltiness, that delicate like vanilla, sugar sort of a fragrance. It's stunning, it's long lasting, it's simple, quite linear but I adore this vanilla. It's so, so good. Next is another fragrance that I wear during the summertime and I adore. It's creamy, it's delicious and it's Soleil Blanc from uh, Tom Blanc, I think, from Tom Ford. This perfume, I can instantly imagine myself on holiday with this perfume. I 
always wear it when it's really really hot outside and I adore the creaminess of it this smells like Malibu cocktails like um, sun-kissed skin like a bit of spiciness suntan lotion just French Riviera oh it's it's delicious it's a perfume for holidays for gourmand lovers if you love sweeter scents but you find yourself really struggling to wear them during really hot weather this has got that you know moorish quality to it but it's fresh enough to still be worn in the summertime oh love it love it so so much all of these i love but this list was really hard to put together next is another freshie that i adore from maison crivelli and it's liz soderberg this one it's just light refreshing it reminds me of nim too these little candies that i used to eat as a child in poland I bet they were, I bet like most people know them if you're from Europe, maybe not so in the US, but let me know. Uh, they were those like little sweets with like syrupy filling inside and that was like lemon, orange, mandarin flavored. This reminds me of that with, with a bit of iris in here. So it's very um, fresh, but also peaceful of a scent, not like a typical citrusy fresh scent but a very calming fresh citrusy scent with the iris it makes it so beautiful so serene and it's a very unique freshy so love this one and i do wear it a lot next is more of a um, recent obsession i would say it's amouage guidance but oh, i adore it so much so i would really miss it if it just one day disappeared from my collection because I've worn it since when did I go to Cannes? October, September and then it came out. I just really enjoy the creaminess of this scent, the bit of smokiness, the clean uh, churchy incense vibe and also how pretty it is at the same time. It's a weird juxtaposition that totally works and makes the scent super wearable but also unique. It lasts and lasts and to me this is a scent that I love to wear as a perfume lover because I do like to wear designer scents but because I own so many I kind of feel like I should be impressing people whatever that means with my fragrance um, in my everyday sort of a sphere uh, of people I meet and I do like to smell a bit different and that gives me this difference while still being super likable because I have gotten so many compliments uh, from uh, people when wearing this and not people who are into fragrances, like just random people. So this is a stunning scent. And next is a Roja perfume. It's my fave. It's my fave. I love it so much. It's Roja Harrods Aoud. And I'm so sorry. It's so... It's not available that much. I mean, on Harrods website, it's sometimes available, but recently I've been having a hard time locating it. So I wish they came out with this scent for like the general public. Actually, Roja, if you're watching this, you should do a collab with me and release it to the public because this is an amazing scent. I wore it for my birthday, I think two years in a row. It's one of those that I just find so juicy. It's this dry oud with this crispy, a bit like an apple opening, I would say, green apple opening. So juicy. It's so, so good. <laughs> just wearing it now. Ah, <laughs> oh, I just, there is something about the dryness of the woods in here that makes it so more as you can't get enough of it. It does lean, I would say, a bit more masculine but that's what i love about it compliments left right and center with this one all the time but that's not why i wear it i genuinely just absolutely adore this scent and i would hope to repurchase it <laughs> so i hope that if if something happens i'm able to repurchase this scent love it 
next perfume that you probably guessed if you've been on this channel for a bit now and as always i'll link all of the perfumes down below if i've got any discount codes uh, for these niche fragrances then i'll pop it also there and i also have uh, my favorite samples website if you want to sample any of these before buying then go ahead because th there is this really amazing website that i always recommend because they've got all the newest perfumes they've got a huge selection but next one is shooting stars starlight by zerzhov this scent has just really overtaken any scent I think the impression, I blind bought this, the impression that it gave me was absolutely mind boggling. I was amazed. I'm searching for that feeling again um, of a perfume to give me that sort of a crazy reaction. I never heard anything about this. I just blind bought it based on the notes <laughs> and it's just amazing. It's white chocolate honey coriander it's very light and airy and sweet and intense it's a strong perfume it lasts forever and it really uh, smells celestial and just outworldly beautiful if you want a powerful confidence boosting beautiful fragrance that people don't know about this is just absolutely stunning to die for totally worth the money yeah love this one and I'm glad to see it in more shops actually put out because I'm not going to say it's me, but I've never seen it like out put like on top of shelves. And I've been in a couple of uh, places and it's always like out there in the first row now. So very happy with it. <laughs> Although I hope it doesn't become too popular because then I'll, I'll be missing out on the uniqueness of it. Next, we've got a Hypnotic Poison by Dior Auto Toilette. This is one of my loves, the perfume that made me fall in love with perfumes in general. And I would just have to repurchase it. It's such a good vanilla oriental with that mintiness. I adore it with that smokiness. It's so sexy, so sensual. It just gives me that wow factor. I don't wear it a lot because I'm very careful when I wear it because I don't want any bad memory associations with it. No way. So this is very precious and I would, this would pr uh, probably be the first perfume I would repurchase um, just because it's got a special place in my heart. I know that I love niche but this it's an amazing designer perfume, wholeheartedly recommend. And another perfume that I would go and repurchase is this one, Cheeky Smile from Juicebox. I love this scent because it's super woody, super transparent and loud in the air so the scent throw is huge. It's very sensual and unusual, but at the same time it does follow the Baccarat Rouge sort of scent profile, but in a more unique way, just because Baccarat Rouge is so popular. But this, I love the bottle, it glows in the dark. It's a scent that my husband also absolutely adores, I adore, so this is one of those that would have to be back in my collection because I know that my husband would be like, where is Cheeky Smile? He would actually push me to wear this because he gets obsessed when I wear this perfume. It's one of those like perfumes that he goes crazy for. So love this one for me and for him. So I would have to go and repurchase it straight away. Let me know what is your first perfume that you would repurchase if something happened to your perfume collection. What would it be and why? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.